Do you become holy as you serve God? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Everything we do needs to be a part of our service to God. A young boy by the name of James had a desire to be the most famous manufacturer and salesman of cheese in the world. He planned on becoming rich and famous by making and selling cheese and began with a little buggy pulled by a pony named Paddy. After making his cheese, he would load his wagon and he and Paddy would drive down the streets of Chicago to sell the cheese. As the months passed, the young boy began to despair because he was not making any money, in spite of his long hours and hard work. One day, he pulled his pony to a stop and began to talk to him. He said, Paddy, there is something wrong. We are not doing it right. I am afraid we have things turned around and our priorities are not where they ought to be. Maybe we ought to serve God and place Him first in our lives. The boy drove home and made a covenant that for the rest of his life, he would first serve God and then would work as God directed. Many years after this, the young boy, now a man, stood as Sunday school superintendent at a church in Chicago and said, I would rather be a deacon in this church than to head the greatest corporation in America. My first job is serving Jesus. So every time you take a bite of Philadelphia cream cheese, mix a quart of Kool-Aid, slice up a DiGiorno pizza, cook a pot of macaroni and cheese, stir a bowl of cream and wheat, slurp down some jello, eat the cream out of the middle of an Oreo cookie, or serve some stovetop. Remember a boy, his pony named Paddy, and the promise that little James Craft made to serve God and work as he directed. Today's Gospel reading speaks to us about two things, humility and the right way to serve God. The Gospel brings us back to Jesus' washing of the feet of the apostles before he is led to his great sacrifice on the cross. He models the kind of sacrificial service that he wants his apostles to give. He knew Judas would betray him, but he still washed his feet. He wanted to show us how we should treat people who betray us, who are disloyal to us. Instead of rejecting Judas or distancing himself, Jesus offered reconciliation, giving Judas a morsel of bread dipped in sauce, a practice of affection among the Jews, showed his compassion to a squealer and traitor. As we go about our service to God in our renewal community or parish, we will always be given tasks to accomplish that we should certainly take seriously, do with much love and dedication. We examine ourselves as the outcome unfolds. If the task is successful, do we thank God immediately and attribute everything to Him? If the task is a failure or if it was not as planned, how do we react? As we serve our Lord, the objective is to let Him be in control. Oftentimes, the cause of our stress is our need to be in control. We just need to do our best and let God take care of the rest, shouldn't we? When we pray, it is for Him to bless our activities, but also for us to accept the eventual outcome, confident and assured that God is in control. When we are pressured in our service, we can be the cause of strained relationships. We can bark at people, blame them blatantly for their mistakes, cause disunity and a breakdown of the peace that is supposed to characterize community life. Is it worth the trouble? Most likely not. We certainly are not serving God but ourselves as we stress, forgive the pun, for control and perfection. Give God the credit for any good that you do successfully. Give the people around you credit for bringing out holiness in you. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, direct me in my loving service to you so that the people I work with will truly feel my love for them. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.